All right, well, thanks for coming. I'm Vince Miller in the Educational Technology Center, and I'm here with uh, Jana Wilnauer with Access Services and Damon Fearborn, who's over in the drafting department, professor. And uh, we've had a conversation going on about accessibility in instructional technology, uh, ADA compliance, and universal design. We've actually got a committee that's looking at um, ways that we can talk to faculty about things that they need to be thinking about when they're teaching um, from a compliance standpoint, but really also from just the best practices and helping you know, some more students uh, be able to interact with those technologies in better ways. Um, and one of the things that um, came up was that uh, actually Damon had a, had a situation with a student where he um, approached Access Services about getting some help, and so that was a story that we wanted to talk about here having to do with video captioning and kind of use that as a springboard and spend some time talking about how that played out and then you know possibly getting into some other technologies as well that are related to that so okay you want to go ahead and come up and tell a little bit about your part in that um, so as mentioned I'm Damon Fearborn and uh, I teach in the drafting department and um, this spring semester previous spring semester I had a student in class that um, um, was wanting to take some fall classes and um, wanted those to be uh, interpreted with an interpreter and not just captioned and it was a hybrid class so this was his next level of class that he would take in the program and we also have a face-to-face -face class of the same offering um, it was actually an online class completely online this will be the first semester it's a hybrid class we found the complete online offering was not quite getting to the students where we wanted so we changed it to hybrid but so I mentioned this student that uh, I didn't want uh, because I produce a lot of videos with Camtasia and a lot of my lectures are through Camtasia uh, to get the material out there. It's somewhat uh, the hybrid model has become or is be going to be somewhat of the flipping the classroom uh, type of scenario if you've heard about that where you post your lectures online and then when they come to class it's more of a do type of scenario not just me talking. I put my lectures and information out there they can access it any time, watch it 15 times if need be and then when they come to class, it's we're doing hands-on stuff. In drafting, that works really well because there's a lot of hands-on stuff to do. I don't know if that would work in your area, but, but that was the idea behind the hybrid um, class. Uh, and so I mentioned the student, I didn't want the amount of videos online to be a deterrent to this student to take this hybrid offering if, if they so choose chose to. And so I mentioned to him earlier in about midway through the spring semester that, hey, just let me know if you want to do this hybrid class, uh, we can probably, before I uh, contacted Access Services, I said, we can probably accommodate you. Um, knowing the type of institution we work at, I said, we can probably do something for you if, if you want to take the class. So he mentioned to me that he did want to take the, the hybrid class and that would you want, so then the next question was, do you want the interpreter in, in these videos online? Well, yes, he did. And so I emailed Access Services and said, hey, can we even do this? Is this, I didn't know anything. I, I, I had never uh, ventured that far into Access Services before, so this was all new to me. And uh, I emailed them and said, hey, this is my situation. Can we get this done? They were great. They emailed back and said, uh, I think so, but let's talk. And so uh, they came over, their, their team came over, and uh, we sat down and I presented my um, situation they felt it could work. I made a couple or had a couple videos already that I sent to them as a um, test run. Uh, they captioned them and interpreted them for me, sent them back. I produced the video through Camtasia. It's got a little, all my videos now will have a little, um, it's like a picture in picture where they will have a, in the lower right corner, an interpreter as well as captioned. Now the great thing um, for us is that we are accommodating this student and, and the, uh, this hybrid or online class uh, can be accessible to all. 
um, because it, we're not, you know, we're not forcing this student to take the face-to-face -face class. We're, we're allowing them to be um, just like any other a student that wouldn't need this, this, uh, this option. So that's great. Um, and then also with the captioning, and again, I, I was learning this as I was going, but in Camtasia, has anybody ever used Camtasia before? Um, so in Camtasia, there is a caption tool. And uh, I learned that through Access Services. And so um, when you, if you, does anybody create videos? So if you create videos, or when you create videos, if you're thinking about doing this, it is very, very easy to caption videos. And so I'm thinking, well, I didn't necessarily want captioning. I, I didn't want captioning on all my videos and subject people that didn't want captioning to captioning. The great thing about this is there's a button that they can turn off captioning if they don't want it. And then it was brought to my attention, which I wasn't thinking of, that some people like captioning even though they're perfectly comfortable with their abilities, right? They like to be able to read as well as hear things spoken to them. Um, many people do it on movies that, that are just fine. And I thought, hey, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good, another good reason to do captioning. We're, we're not just accommodating students that might need that, but we're really accommodating every student in our class if they want that. And we're not imposing anything on the students that don't want that. So it is absolutely a 100% benefit potentially to everybody in your class and not a deterrent to anybody. And so for me, it is, it is a no-brainer that from this point forward, I will be captioning every video I create in Camtasia and, and post online. The, the uh, um, interpreter part, that would be for me a upon request uh, option, okay? And I think Access Services, we've talked about that, and that's kind of their stance too. Uh, at the minimum level, we need to caption these videos, we really do. And, and, and it, as easy as it is, psh, it's done. Whether it be a, a lecture or whether it be supplemental materials, it's, it's, it's really easy to caption. And then if you have a student that says, for whatever reason, I'd really like a interpreter, we can do that, or they can do that too. I, I can't do that, but, uh, um, and it doesn't take, a lot of my videos are, I don't know, roughly 30 minutes, some shorter, some are gonna be a little longer, but um, how long would that take on your end to um, interpret that and? Uh, After we type up the script, um, and the script takes longer to type depending on the speed of the um, speaker and the information that needs to be typed. as long as it takes to probably run through it once and practice and then keep the second video as the real thing mm -hmm. and then attaching it to the um, script. Yeah, so this isn't difficult for really anybody involved. It's just a matter of, of go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were going to jump in there. Uh, so really it's not hard for anybody involved. It's just a matter of, you know, doing just a little bit extra and sending it to Access Services. They send it back. You produce it. You've got it, and if you if you change anything at any point, send it on its way. Even in Camtasia, maybe you want to change this a little bit. We'll just change that a little bit, then edit it in. You don't have to do the whole hour long thing again. You just change a little ten minutes, or add ten minutes, and then you know you don't have to change the whole thing. So the technology is there to make this a really easy and viable um, resource for our students, and not just students that uh, need it. Uh, students that uh, want it or would like it, it's there. Any questions so far? Comments? On the captioning, does the professor keystroke it in or do you do it? It can be done either way. Mm -hmm. Which way would you do it? Right now, they have been gracious yeah. enough to say they would do that. Because I would think for me in terms of terminology, mm -hmm. I'll just do it because I know that's a weird word and that sort of thing. And that's where I'm going from this point forward. They're helping me with this hybrid class um, initially. From this point forward, 
I'm probably going to do it myself because I'm the same way. I know what I want to say more than somebody else. And I know what I'm saying more than anybody else. You know, they even requested a textbook to say if they came across some terms, you know, there, there's some language barrier for sp specific uh, learning areas, I would think. And so again, for me, from this point forward, I'm going to key it in myself, and it's really easy. Okay, that's it, you can do it offline. You can do it through Camtasia. Oh, those are nice. So real quick, did you have anything? So real quick, um, if you have a video, it's under the More button, and it's Caption. And here you are now, a little word thing comes out, and you're typing. You're typing. Oh, and it says click and paste. So you can do this in a Word document. Copy and paste, you're, you're golden. Okay. Um, add caption to media. Do that. You start typing, this is my caption, whatever. And it adds it. And then it becomes a little file. See this little file down here? You can drag that precisely where you start saying this. And so it's synced with what you're saying. It's very easy to sync it. You don't have to do any magic thing to sync it. You can drag this. It's like a transition. Or a, if you've ever worked with any video editing software, it's like a transition or a title deal. It's, it's, you just click that and you drag that anywhere you want. Exactly time it to where you say this. And then it just flows. right? And uh, it's, it's very easy. So again, you can do it in software or out of software and listen to your video and type in Word if you like that and then copy and paste it. It's a piece of cake. Anything else on that? Why is it every video caption? I agree. That was my realization after I, and this little more button, well, I never clicked on more because I didn't need more. <laughs> I got everything I needed in, in these buttons. And uh, until, I, until this student came to me and said, I would like this, and I started working with Access Services, oh, you mean there is more under more? <laughs> and right there. Uh, um, so I'm already in captioning, so it's not there now. But um, yeah, and so that was my realization. Why isn't everybody doing this? So that was one reason we wanted to present this with hopefully more involvement. But, but that's OK. Hopefully, we can bring this forth. and and do this because, again, it's not, we're kind of mandated to do this anyway, uh, you know, by state law. And so, but, but my aspect was from doing it because it would benefit, it potentially could benefit every student in my class. I, I like to do things not because I'm forced to, <laughs> uh, but because it's best practice, right? It's, it's you want to make a video and, and put this information out on the web and you wanted to make it to the best of your ability to be beneficial to every student potential in class, well, this allows that. And then it's very easy. Once you produce this, you click Produce and Share, and you can produce it to many different formats. I always go web, which is not an option, but this just got installed, so it might not be up to date. But you can produce it to any different CD, web, YouTube, any different format. And then as the video gets produced, um, it has a little button um, down in the lower right, a little CC button. And on my videos, I never knew what that was. Uh, but it has a little CC button. And you click that to turn on captioning. You click it to turn it off. Yeah, close captioning, duh. But, uh, and so it, it, it really is easy. And it really is not intrusive on anybody that doesn't want it. Because I, I was thinking through the process, well, this could be distracting. I, I didn't want these words along the bottom be de to be distracting to somebody that didn't want it. Wait, well, turn off. And in my class, that, that, you know, that's going to be made clear in the syllabus and everything. If you don't like this, turn it off. If you like it, turn it on. And so now I think this will be the first time class using this, but I think it's going to be great. Because when the class was completely online, uh, I would get emails from students that I could tell just through their emails were not understanding the information I was presenting. Uh, it was a basic level class. It was interpreting architectural drawings. There's a lot of technical information when we do this. And I could tell based on these questions I was getting that they weren't understanding my videos. And so my hope is that by captioning these and being able to, and, and I think some of the questions involved from a language barrier, um, you know, they weren't real strong in English. 
Um, and so I think with these captioning, it's gonna help with that. I hope that that's the whole, so. A question for access services. I've never videotaped anything, but I've had a number of students where they need a note taker. Would caption lectures do away with some of the need for note taking, do you think? I think it would supplement. Uh -huh. I think that's what we would recommend. It's always, um, a student comes to access services and it's always on a case by case right. basis. So you might have a student who tested, two kids that tested even the same, but really <coughs> need um, different accommodations. Okay. So okay. note taking is one of those things that covers a lot of students or aids, a lot of students that we would probably keep in there and we would encourage then the supplemental material to all be captioned. Okay. Um, and just to, to piggyback on what Damon said, you know, we know that deaf students need captioning to have access to the information. We know that. But we know hard of hearing people is sin sitting even in front of their computer uh, get a better message if they can read it along with hearing it. We know second, English as second um, uh, language users, they get they can sometimes read English much better than they can understand it auditorily. So we know that we get a large group of people and we promote accessibility to that whole group of people. So um, universal design, and that's kind of one of the things that we talked about a little bit, and we're gonna probably talk a little more. What, what's good for one person is good for everybody. So that curb cut, for that person um, is good for the bicyclist and the stroller and the backpack and um, the push button door is good for me when I have my hands full with groceries and it's good for the stroller and it's good for the grocery guy, it's good for the wheelchair, it's good for everybody. So, so captioning is right there with universal design. Yeah, I think, the, go ahead. I, I just got a question that occurred to me. Um, so you, you put the videos up in Angel Mm -hmm. um, do you also put the caption transcripts up there as, as Word documents or PDFs? Well, I haven't. So far, Access Service has been uh, captioning those for me, so I don't have any document like that as such, but I think that would be a uh, resource. Because from a universal design perspective, that's a whole layer of information, and if I'm looking at maybe a whole semester's worth of videos at the end to study for the final, and I'm trying to find where did he talk about that, that one term and I've got something I can search through some mm -hmm. text, that might be nice or even just to read a little passage. But I don't know from a pedagogical standpoint, does that? That's just what I was gonna say from an instructor standpoint, to me, that gets into me providing notes. And so for me personally, somebody might like it, but for me personally, I would probably not do that because I, I have given you the information. It's up to you now to do something you know, this is a two-way street, this, this education process is, and so I would think it would be up to them then to ask questions and get me involved if they didn't understand anything. They have to guide them. You're right, they have to, it, it becomes a lot more of a learning process when they write it down instead of just go search. But, but, but some people might like that. It's another resource. Yeah, and I was just going to say on what you were saying, to me it comes down to not making Angel or, or you know, wherever you make these videos for students to access um, not a, a deterrent to learning. And uh, this, by captioning the videos, it's just another uh, um, door that they don't have to, uh, you know, hit their head against. To, it's, it's there, and it makes it even clearer to to get that voice into text format. Do you think that you'll have any way to <coughs> measure the impact of having captions? Because you're starting out at the beginning of the term, and you, I mean, you don't have, a, obviously, a like-for-like -like population because the standard right. students are going to go through the standard access. Right. Uh, I'm going to do that, and but it will be hard to determine whether it was moving to the hybrid format or captioning or some of both. Since we're moving from the online to the hybrid, I was already going to see if performance came up to level we wanted. And so it'll be a little harder to determine if it was because of hybrid or captioning. It might be interesting to at least anecdotally survey the students at the end of the semester. That's what I was gonna say. I could, uh, we meet 
one of our meetings was right before the final, so I could either do it face to face or say, go on Angel and take this survey. Uh, please give me your feedback, and and that probably do that, yeah. And and ask if directly if captioning was a help, basically. Um, you did caption last semester. No, no, this is my first coming up next Monday. Will be that well, it's a late start class, but this semester is the first time I've captioned. How much as you present a lecture? How much of the words that you speak do you anticipate going into the? Because I know I have. I'll show you. Chit chat. Okay, good. How about that? I'm a show guy. I like that. <laughs> uh, they do a fantastic job at Access Services. I can say not... Captioning really is word for word. If, it, if I were to really caption correctly, mm -hmm. I would put the um and the, the um... Yeah. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> that could have so the one of the things I'm thinking about, I've got several classes this semester where two-thirds of the students are Chinese from KU coming here. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of anecdote. It's hard. I realize I have a lot of anecdotal, cultural, American garbage that for their clarity, I would leave out. If, if it's a English for a, as a second language sort of thing. Because, um, does that mean anything? Mm. No. It's, um... <laughs> it, it is kind of your philosophy of captioning. If I went to the web and I read the rules of how to caption, um, it would tell me spell, spell out every number. Um, it would say things like uh, include background so noises, just like you see yeah. on TV. If you yeah. have a lot of caption on TV, it has some environment sort of things. Okay. Well, it was seeing two of them. But it wasn't seen in here where I could access it. I didn't want to just pull hers out, but I didn't oh, know which one hers okay. was. Pull, yeah. pull, plug it in just again. pull it out. So no. what you're plug talking about in. is in your subtitle. And you could leave out some of that English funny stuff. That goes, okay. Kind of humor. Um, but what, what a Chinese-speaking person would see is you moving your mouth and nothing there. So I think it's something very confusing.
so anyway, Ted, I think we answered your question. It's, it really is, can be uh, word for word, and, and, but they do a great job of not really making it word for word. They do kind of take out the ums and the uh, stuff, but it, really, it is pretty close to what you're saying. So I wish I could have showed you, but the, I'm using an old version. This is a new version here. They're not liking each other, but... I don't. Um, did that address that okay? And then if you did it yourself, of course, you could do whatever uh, amount you wanted there. Sure. On the PowerPoint. Another um, presentation that we gave last last week during Sidelight, and we wanted to demonstrate what we were doing. So um, Damon does have um, the whiteboard going at the at the same time that he's talking. So it's just not Damon's talking head up there. He's zooming into videos. He's giving examples right here of the rulers and how to use it. He's using. Um, the you know red markers and he uses arrows and all sorts of things so the caption um, is the next picture the next picture is an example of just the captioning it's down at the bottom it shrinks his screen up a little bit in this captioning um, whereas the interpreter really covers a corner that could be made a little bit smaller but um, for a student to sit in front of a computer and watch a two by two block of a person signing. It's pretty, pretty condensed, so we wouldn't want to make it much smaller, though it does, it, you see that it does cover up a little of his, his screen there. And that is one thing I need to be aware of that when captioning, I mean, when, when, when interpreting, I need to not put things in lower right. It can be anywhere, right? That, that, that person could be anywhere. We've decided on lower right, and so. One of my videos, I forgot about that, and there's some things happening behind this video, but they have the print in front of them, and so they can, they can follow along. But again, I use Camtasia is really fantastic in itself, let alone that you can caption now. But you can draw red, red, uh, and I did all this in Camtasia. I didn't do this in PowerPoint. The red circle and, and square that was in Camtasia, you can point to arrows, you can highlight stuff in Camtasia, you can zoom. I could take this PowerPoint slide and zoom in on that, so that's all they saw in Camtasia. It is through Camtasia that I do all my bells and whistles to draw attention to what I'm talking about. And so when I'm doing this, when I'm because again, nobody wants to meet, see me talk for 30 minutes. That's really boring, and the tune, students would tune that out pretty quickly. And so I have a PowerPoint, and it's just me talking in the background. And when I'm doing this and making the video in my office, um, I say, as you see here, because I know what I want to zoom in on. I pause for just a couple seconds, and then when it comes into Camtasia, when I say here, I make a little arrow pointed at or highlight what I wanted to say here about. So it's a, it is a fantastic, for me, way to put information online that the students almost better than me in the classroom because they can watch it again and again and again if they didn't get it that day in class. And that's one of the reasons I like this and, and captioning as well, I think is br gonna bring it to another level, is that it's there. That information I want them to know is there. And they can watch this thing 15 times. And if they're watching it 15 times, hope they would ask questions at that point, but, but you know, if that student doesn't like that, it's, it's there. And it's not them trying to write notes down in class and, and worrying about more about writing notes than about what I'm saying. Me, I would think, oh, i watch this one time, maybe watch it again for, for note taking, and, you know, but it's there. And you can, through Camtasia, make it really wow to the students because that's what students like nowadays is, is uh, more than just a PowerPoint with somebody talking. Anything else? 
If you would uh, think you might want to either just use Camtasia at the captioning level, um, I think either, well, I could be a, a resource. I know Vince could be a resource as well in the Ed Tech Center, but uh, if you don't want to go to go to Vince, I'd be willing to offer uh, what I know about it to you as well. Um, you can be, if you're at all uh, technologically somewhat competent, you can get Camtasia down in, in 20 minutes. And, and if you want, and what I did was just purchase a little, uh, I didn't, department did purchase a little webcam, sits on top of my monitor, and I sit in my office and run through my PowerPoints while I'm talking. They don't show me. If I want to show me, because sometimes you can't talk about everything in drafting, you have to draw stuff. So I purchased a little whiteboard from Walmart that I just show my arm. So I, I don't, really don't want to be on video at all, really. Uh, and so it just shows my arm and it's me talking. So I take the camera, point it to my little whiteboard, and then it's just me drawing on the board with, with talking. Sometimes so you I, are producing it yourself in your office? Absolutely. Oh, okay. I absolutely. I'm sitting in my office in my shorts. <laughs> In your comfy Doesn't office, like this. absolutely not. Uh, uh, um, camera, uh, what's the word for those? Webcams. Webcams. You can get a two gig web webcam, and that will be even better than what you want to do on the web, because you want to compress that down for the web. Otherwise, it's it takes too long to load, and then it's jerky, and you know all that stuff. So you really don't want it. You don't need as good as technology as you can get. A very cheap webcam will do what you need to do. Digital camera. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can set absolutely. You don't even need a webcam. If you know that you never want to do any video, you can just uh, record your voice and import that as a voice file on a PowerPoint and you're done. Because Camtasia allows you to do that. You don't you can you can record the screen even. So not just a PowerPoint. If you have I'm getting off track here and going more into Camtasia than maybe, but but maybe not. Um, with Cam so right now, if I wanted to do a little uh, video for my class, if this was an intro to computers class, and I wanted to, sh to show my class how to access the, uh, a file on the desktop, I could do this, and I could say, you know, blah, 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 what, you're, you're talking, and you go to double click on computer, and it's recording all this right now, it's recording my mouse movements, and right now, I could zoom in on just this window through Camtasia. And I say, okay, class, now what I want you to do is double click your desktop. And not right now, I could hover over that and zoom in on that or highlight that or make it big and green and point arrows to it through Camtasia. And I say, okay, double click that. And this is what you'll find. I say, okay, now access the control panel. I can hover over that and zoom in on that through Camtasia. And through Camtasia, it becomes much more than um, somebody talking, it becomes almost an interactive one way. Uh, presentation, right? Um, and so, since I, and in class, that's great. If, if this was a face to face class, that'd be fine. I want you to do this because everybody can see that. But through a video, maybe they don't see it quick enough before I move on. And they're like, oh shoot, I, I don't know where it clicked. I know he said control panel, but I don't know where that was. And so, through Camtasia, you can almost make it better than a face to face class because you can say control panel and make that fluorescent orange and have no doubt that they know exactly where that button is or, or item is that you want them to see. So through my prints, I have PDFs of all my large prints, and it, it works fantastic to say, okay, now I want you to look into the kitchen, and we're going to look at those hidden lines on the kitchen wall cabinets. Where the heck is that at? I don't know. Well, I can zoom in on that, and I can highlight that, and there's no doubt that I know that that student knows exactly what I'm talking about. I don't have to assume they have found it or pause, and they don't have to pause till they find it. It's right there, and then they have the print in front of them, and so they know where it is on their print. They're following along. It's a fantastic um, module. So, you know, why don't we back up to a slightly different direction? Teaching face to face, I live by PowerPoint. I walk into class and I leave the class with PowerPoint up. Can I produce a PowerPoint that has a voice track, or do I have to? Make that PowerPoint in Camtasia. If you follow what I'm saying. Um, could, could, yeah, can you through PowerPoint? 
Can you record? I. I haven't tried that. I think you can do audio in PowerPoint, but that's the requirement. Like the track all the way along. Yeah, I've got 150 slides in 60 minutes. Yeah. Is there an automatic slideshow format that has a voice track to it? I haven't seen that done. Okay. So it, it would be for this one easier to do a Camtasia mm -hmm. of my PowerPoint. Right. Okay. Just like James said, it's really simple to do. Yeah. But through Camtasia, there is. And I, again, I'll have to. Uh, If I close this down, where's this located, Vince, to open it back up? Uh, what's that? Camtasia. Yeah, project just, just Camtasia as a. I think you've got it open. Yeah. Well, but if I close this down, where do I go to open it back oh, up? Just oh, Camtasia. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not used to looking for that icon. I'm I'm on the seven version. But if I close this down, now I don't know if the eight's going to do it. But in the seven version, when you open it up, you have options of what you want to record. You can record screen. You can record video. You can record PowerPoint. And so you open up your PowerPoint, and it knows what you want to do. It works with PowerPoint. There's an add-on. It's a little add-on through Camtasia that you say, I want to make that active or something. And PowerPoint knows that you've got Camtasia, and they work great together. And you say, I want to record, um, I want to record, uh, record screen. So it, the eight's a little different than the seven, but. I think if you launch the PowerPoint, you might, that's where you would get the little. Maybe. Yeah, I, I know it's up here somewhere in my, and we just got the new version of Office yeah. too, so I'm not. It's not installed yet. Yeah, so, but they work great together. So in other words, you're saying I don't have to do anything special, just one day turn on the mic on the laptop, as I'm teaching, there's a lecture in Camtasia with the. Done. Why isn't everybody in here? <laughs> it is truly no more work on your part to do something like this. And that's something if you want to you know, spend some time with somebody in the next tech center walking through that one time, you can do that. Or I'm right down the hall from you. Just say, hey, run me through it. <laughs> I'll take advantage of that. Don't sure. Offer, unless you're serious. Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, we're upcoming Fridays. I need to do that. Absolutely. If you think this will be a benefit to you, we can have you up and running in, in uh, 30 minutes. Tops. Anything, comments, concerns? Could you use that in the math department? I don't think there's any question that uh, it can be used because, you know, right now what we have, we have some online programs that have, you know, homework is up there for students to do. And, they, and there are some links that go to videos, but they're not necessarily specific to what we are doing in our individual class. They may be, you know, related. It's like, Yes, to some degree, finding the slope of a line is the same no matter what classroom you're in. But there might be some things that I tell them that are going to be on my test that aren't going to be on the that, that aren't on this video that's accessible through them. So by me being able to, to do that and put something similar where they can access mine instead of this generic version, you know, I, I can't see anything but a benefit. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I was like, why doesn't everybody know about this? Why, you know, because we've got a lot of video online, whether it's our own produced or, or whatever, but we've got a lot of video online that is not even meeting the minimum standards of, of uh, what we need to be meeting through, through uh, ADA. And so we are, you know, at, at the least we are in non-compliance with that. But then on a more personal note, we're probably not doing the best we can for our students by, by not doing the captioning is what I'm talking about, not just Camtasia, but the captioning then. Um, and yeah, as Camtasia as a whole is easy, but then doing that captioning is kind of what the process was about is really easy as well. So if either of you, I don't know where the math department is, but I could find it. But, uh, you know, if, if uh, I, I, you know, I don't know, Vince, maybe we do a uh, brown bag over this or something. Mm -hmm. And we typically do that, and we usually offer a, a workshop or something. So 
Yeah, mm -hmm. just maybe we'll do it that way. Well, I can help you in the meantime, but but uh, do you think that this would be uh, in your department more uh, more people would want to know about this? Uh, I think particularly for those who teach online courses, um, not that it couldn't be used as a supplement to face to face, face to face, uh, but but certainly to online instructors, if if only as a method of you know a student ask an individual question, it is sometimes easier to turn on the camera, do a little video demonstrating an answer to a math question rather than trying to type out. <laughs> and even even typing out equations, I mean, yes, you can do all those things, but I gotta believe it's gonna be a little bit more useful for the students to do it uh, with, some, with some audio, video interaction. Um, I, I've been using the smart pen for the last couple of years to, you know, that, that's been where I am now, but, you know, seeing this, I wonder if this will even be of any use in, you know, So how do you, how do you use your smart pen? I'm curious. Well, what I, what I use my smart pen for is uh, have a student in the class take notes, which they'll take, most of them will take notes anyway. Face to face, say right? One of them, yeah, here, okay. take the notes with this on, on this paper. And it, I can upload it to my computer in terms of converts to a PDF with audio. So I mean, it's not, it's not nothing. It's 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 actually, and I've used it for actual services for students who need no. the notes. Yeah, uh, and it and, and it not only just gives them the notes that the students would take for them anyway, but it gives them a little audio, the audio to go with it. So and um, and where the glitch is to that is that a deaf person wouldn't get the same access because they, would they just, can't hear they would get voice. the same they access that any other student who needed notes would get. They would get the written notes. Through, through caption. Yeah. That's right. Whereas this, I think, far more useful for those students especially. Yeah. One thing I was going to mention that both of you kind of made me remember was that, um, well, first of all, if you've got an idea, it can probably get done here. You just gotta ask and find the right person. And uh, for me, that's Vince. But but uh, I just ask him, and he says go or, or access services, either one. But but if you got this idea of something technological you want to do, there's resources here to do that. I'm I'm quite sure. And people that are experts in that that can help you get what you want. And so I was gonna say that maybe what you want is just record your lecture and the video department will come do that. They will set up a professional camera and get some high quality video of you doing your thing. And then you've got that, you've got a voice track if that's all you want, but you've also got some video to clip into this Camtasia and make a different video. So if that's of, of need to, um, just just call Vince there, and uh, um, I think isn't that what, who they would contact for that? They can, if it's a, you know, be, there's a scale issue there. If we had a thousand people, wanting sure. To do that. But yeah, but don't but don't we have a we do have that a lecture of, capture something? Yeah, I mean, what we try to do just because um, if you wanted to record an entire, like an entire class, a semester's worth. We've, we've had some faculty do that, but we've typically tried to set that up more now in the studio. Like Dave right. Krug and Lisa Cole have done that. So that we've got that set up and we can make it look professional. Sometimes when you're in the classroom, you know, you might the lighting and some of the things might not be perfect. Good point. Um, but certainly we do sometimes go in ad hoc for a you know, guest speaker or students are giving speeches and they want to record that. The other piece is that the counterpart to Camtasia Studio is Camtasia Relay, which is kind of a, almost a light version of Camtasia Studio. So the studio is really more of a sitting back in your office like Damon was talking about, where you have a little bit of time, maybe you're doing some whiteboarding, you're going back and adding effects. The Camtasia Relay is a client that's installed on that workstation, and you start your class and you hit record, and it records the screen plus the audio, and then when you're done with class, you hit publish, and it goes out to a server, which then you get that, you get an email that says, here's how you upload this to your angel shell. So there's not really any extra, because you don't have time to do the class and then go back and spend another three hours 
editing that, it's just an instantaneous deal for you. So it's just real time. That's probably a lot better than calling you and having a camera. If you just want the raw video, right. that's the way to go. It's a self-service thing. Yep. You're not having to get a lot of extra support. For me, I live in a darkened room, so it sounds like MT's relay is more. Probably. Okay. Yeah. But, but if yeah. you would have a deaf student in that class, right. and you posted something like that, it's really it, not Relay does not caption. It, it, it will. It's the same thing. Yeah, you, you can bring your relay it. video yeah. into right. the studio right. and do your caption. Right. So you can do that. And oh, oh we, right. would want, right. we would want to do that. Even if you would post it quickly, we would want to say the caption version will be available in two weeks yeah, or something like possible. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and Camtasia is free to download. I think Ed would be the. Uh, no, Camtasia Studio, um, there is a license, but we have license. Th well, that's what I meant. Yeah, you, you just contact me and I'll get you. Okay, so Vince will be, so just say, I need a Camtasia, and he'll send you a number, you download it online, type in that and number. That's the studio or relay, either one? Both, yeah. They're, yeah. Yep. And then. And the other piece that I might mention is, if you have a tablet, an iPad, that the same company, TechSmith, also has a little app on here called Screen Chomp, and it does basically the same thing. So you can do your, whatever presentation, the keynote, or, uh, you can do some whiteboarding, and then you can also capture video, audio, and wow, screen. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. One more digression. As you're the specialist, the next session I'm going to is on the iPad. How soon will PowerPoint go away, and iPad technology will be what I focus on? Well, I'm not sure how to answer that exactly, but I do know that there's a lot more faculty starting to bring these into the classroom and asking that question. So the, the one sort of technical barrier that we're working through right now is how to get this to control the projector. And it's doable um, with an Apple TV or a couple of other technologies, but we, we're, we're still testing that out. But that's, the, that's part of the uh, iPad pilot that we have going on with faculty right now is to find out how we can make all those pieces work for the folks that want to do that. Couldn't you just run another cable with yeah, the specific you can, plug-in? You can cable it together with you know into the Crestron or whatever to control, but then you're tethered. And True. You know, That's right. Right. Out walking around with yep. it. So who wants to be only one foot True. from the podium? True. So. Wow. Exciting. Any any other digressions? Not that I can't tap you on your shoulder. <laughs> Two doors down any time. We're next door to each other. Anytime. That's all I got. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much.